Now remember, this method is to find out the TAS. Perfect. The first method is using the Mach number equation. And we know that Mach number is the ratio of true airspeed divided by local speed of sound. And local speed of sound, we are also aware of the equation of local speed of sound, which is 38 decimal 9 or 5 root of temperature. And remember, the temperature is in Kelvin. So we have the outside air temperature given here as minus 45 degrees Celsius. Convert that to Kelvin by adding a 273 to it as 5 square root. Multiply with 38 decimal 9 5, and you will get the local speed of sound. Multiply that with the Mach number of 0 0.46, and you will get the task. This is one way of finding the task. And as I said, we will be looking at uh, the method number two, which is using your CX3. The second method which is using your navigation computer. Now, one thing which you would keep in mind is the answer which you get through your manual calculation and that through the CX3 could be different. Not way different, but they would be different based on some of the values won't be exactly the same. Don't really freak out. That's because the calculation is kind of, uh, the calculator is kind of doing it using set uh, conversions and we might be doing it more appropriately uh, and the values might change. I highly recommend you to use the values from CX3 because from what I have seen, that goes more in line with the options given in the question. All right. So CX3, let's, let's grab the CX3 here. As I told you, the CX3 is easily available on your phone as well. Uh, you can practice on that at the moment, just in case if you don't have an actual calculator with you. But make sure you get one way before the exam and practice on your physical calculator as well. Right. So having the CX3, so it almost looks like this. It's just an exact replica. You will feel like you're having the CX3. Uh, the actual calculator in your hand. Uh, so grab your CX3 and first thing first you have to find the true airspeed. So it's basically airspeed, right? So you have to go to the airspeed tab. So let's navigate to the airspeed tab, which is a fifth tab. And uh, there you have multiple options for TAS, outside temperature, Mach number, and so on and so forth, right? Now let's enter the very first value, which is the outside air temperature of minus 45 degrees Celsius. Now look at the outside temperature and before you enter the value, make sure that the unit is right. Very, very common mistake that I've seen uh, students making is that they just enter the value minus 45 and that could be degree Fahrenheit and the answer, trust me, is going to be nowhere close, right? So here, uh, make sure you press the convert unit button and convert it to the appropriate unit. So I'll make it degree Celsius here and then you can enter 45. Uh, minus 45 degrees Celsius. Perfect. Now, what's the Mach number given the question? 0 0.46. That's it. Once you press the, the orange uh, button, you will instantly get the true air speed as 270.75 knots. So, from your uh, air speed tab, you can find out your TAS to be 270.75 knots. Right now, once the task is known, now you have all the four parameters. Namely, we have the track, uh, we have the wind direction, wind velocity, and now we have the task to be 270 decimal 75 knots. So all four elements of the uh, of the wind velocity triangle out of the six elements is known, which means you are left with heading and ground speed, which you can eventually find out. And for that, we need to go back and navigate to wind correction tab all the way down. Right? Now, the good thing with CX3 is that once you navigate through and once you reach this wind correction tab, the task which you already found out from the RSP tab is kind of recorded and displayed straight there, which means you don't have to jot it down or kind of memorize it and struggle to type it in. So you can see task is already there, this 2775 knots. Let's enter the true course, which is 200 degrees true. Heading is something which we need to find out. And let's move on to wind speed and wind direction. Now, another point for you to remember and to kind of recognize how important that is. Now, over my experience teaching, this is one of the areas where I have largely confronted uh, students making a mistake. And the, the, the sad part is it's very difficult to realize this. Uh, they kind of do it again and again to get the answer desperately, making the same mistake uh, again and again. All right. So the, the problem here is look at the wind speed and direction given in the question. That's 270 at 85. The direction comes first and then the speed. And what comes in the scientific, uh, sorry, the CX3 is the speed first and then the direction. Now, what generally happens is uh, people do enter speed in the column for direction, in the row for direction, and direction in the row for uh, speed. Now, this might not really feel significant uh, in this particular wind speed and direction because uh, the wind direction is 270 and speed is 85. They are distinguishably different. But say, for example, a wind speed of, say, 45 
uh, sorry, wind direction of 45 degrees, which means it's coming from like northeasterly winds, uh, 0 0.45 at 50 knots. You see the confusion there, right? The direction is kind of smaller than the speed. So you have that automatic thing in mind that the direction has to be a bigger value and having uh, this speed coming first and then the direction in your CX3 is really, really messing up. Right? Even with experienced people, you can actually find that they go wrong here, but the good thing is they come back and they realize it and just get surprised. Perfect, so let's enter the wind speed here and that's going to be 85 first and then followed by 270. All the values are true here and therefore there is nothing much to worry. Even with the wind, since nothing of ATIS and ATC is mentioned, it's all going to be a true value, right? Now, once you press enter, you get your ground speed and your heading straight away, right? So let's go and see what the ground speed is. So the ground speed over here, so it's the second method, the ground speed is 229 decimal 6. 3 knots that is you can round that off to 230 uh, generally I round off the very final answer and before rounding off I kind of make sure I have a look at the options and uh, do a sensible rounding off so I recommend you to kind of hold on your rounding off till the very last as much as possible it's, it's quite convenient with your scientific calculator because it has an answer function which can hold your answer uh, so try to actually use that and kind of um, kind of push that complete value forward until re until you reach the final answer and then kind of look at the option and decide on how to round off right so the ground speed is 2 to 9 decimal 6 3 knots and look at the heading the heading which is the true heading here is 217 degrees True. Perfect. So these are the two primary values which we actually need. So ground speed and heading. Now ground speed is definitely asked in the question. So the ground speed of 229 is approximately uh, 230. You can look at options A, Alpha, Bravo, Charlie and Delta and pretty clear that uh, Charlie is the answer because the ground speed is 228 pretty much close to the answer which we got uh, here. Now they're asking you to find out not the heading but the drift but indirectly we have found out the drift itself. Now we have a heading here of 217 degrees true and we have the planned track of um, 200 right now that will immediately give you the drift the drift is going to be 17 degrees that is the angle between the heading and the track now it's always important to understand that since the track is to the left of the heading or track is actually lower value uh, the drift is more to the port so it's port drift or you can write 17 degrees left uh, drift now drift is usually indicated as port or starboard i very rarely seen it expressed as left or right uh, while track alone is the one that is more inclined to be expressed as left or right uh, but that's fine uh, you, as long as you know what it means that's fine so we have a drift of 17 degrees port Explain drift and track curve in a different video separately, but to explain that we have to have the whole picture stamped all together into a piece of paper and then, then work it out from the scratch. So I'm not explaining that too much here, but yes, the question is asking for ground speed and drift. So ground speed is 2 to 9. And the drift is 17 degrees left. So that brings us to the option sharply as the right answer 17 degrees left and 228 uh, knots all right i hope this question uh, made sense to you i know that it could be a bit dragging for uh, students who were kind of who knows this but um keep in mind that uh, these questions are largely asked for the exam and uh, i have seen a more percentage of errors coming up from questions of these sort than with questions like of course cppnr or uh, questions with gyro and stuff so here the general navigation that's very very tiny at the same time it's very very precise you really have to be very very careful with a lot of things uh, that is why i thought of explaining this question now uh, having said this i have got a different question which uh, which i got through a through a chat uh, which i'll be explaining a bit later in that particular question what i'm going to do is i'm going to kind of take these values which we just found out like the track the heading wind etc and we're going to we're going to create a real scenario uh, right from the pre-flight uh, stage on how is this significant for you as a student pilot 